water's moving. It's often moving very quickly, and that is a very frightening experience. Safety experts remind people of the dangers of the water after a holiday weekend swim in the Niagara River turns deadly. And we're in a kind of once in a generation crisis in inventory. An auto parts shortage blamed for lack of vehicles as more people look to get on the road. How do you fall, get up, and still win the race? Just incredible. An overnight children's camp in Muskoka is closed today after a COVID-19 outbreak was declared. Muskoka Woods says they had single-digit cases over the span of two weeks, closing the camp for week five of their programming. The camp says it will continue to work with the Simcoe Muskoka Health District Unit to determine when to safely reopen. And a woman is dead and a man is missing after going for a swim in the Niagara River yesterday afternoon. Niagara Regional Police say the two, both in their 20s, had been hiking with friends from the GTA when they went into the river. As Talia Ricci reports, the area is known to have strong currents, which has experts reminding people about the dangers of the water. It was these fast-moving waters where officers say they found a woman in her 20s in critical condition yesterday. She later died in hospital. They were not, were not able to easily uh, get her out of there. So a commercial tourist agency that's in the area, the Niagara Jet Boats, they brought one of their boats in and the female was loaded onto the boat. Niagara Regional Police got a call about two people in distress in the river around 5 o'clock. Police are still searching the area for a man today. When the female uh, became in distress, uh, one of her friends, a male in his 20s, also from the GTA, attempted to assist her. Uh, but he became caught in the current and disappeared into the, uh, into the water. Unfortunately, we have a lot of instances right now where people are going into the gorge area without really knowing the dangers. Police say a group of friends from the GTA had gone for a hike on the trails in the gorge along the Niagara River. Niagara Helicopters is helping with the search. Anna Pierce says accidents in the area are common. You get slip and falls, you get people swimming in the, the river itself. So we do help a lot with recoveries and trying to help people get out of very sticky situations down there. The Life Saving Society says last week was National Drowning Prevention Week. Its senior research officer says the last two weeks of July and the first two weeks of August are when the highest number of drownings occur. The weather's the nicest. Many people take holidays and there's a long weekend in the middle of it. If possible, we really recommend that people go swimming uh, in lifeguard supervised areas. That's the safest place to swim. Less than 1% of all drownings occur where lifeguards are working. Barbara Beyer says it's also important for people who aren't strong swimmers to wear a life jacket and for parents to make sure they aren't distracted on their phones if they're watching kids in the water. She says rivers like this one can be especially dangerous. If you are, um, say, going into a river uh, or going into a gorge or a dam, often the water is moving. It's often moving very quickly, and that is a very frightening experience, even for really strong swimmers. Niagara police say its investigation is ongoing and they're asking anyone with information on the incident to contact them. Talia Ricci, CBC News, Toronto. A man in his 40s is dead after a fire at a motel on Kingston Road near McCowan. Crews say smoke was visible when they arrived on scene and the doors to the building were locked. Our crews quickly made entry to the unit, uh, knocked the fire down and within uh, several minutes we found a male casualty who was VSA at the time. Uh, it happened just after 7 this morning. Fire crews say the victim was located in the washroom of the motel unit. The cause of the fire is still unknown. The Ontario Fire Marshal is assisting police and fire crews in the investigation. Demand for new cars is through the roof in North America. Just one problem, there's almost no inventory. The main problem is a worldwide shortage of microchips used in most modern cars. As Chris Dali Ramalakan reports, that means finding a car on the lot involves legwork and ordering one could take months. Normally we would have about maybe around 200 new cars on the lot at this point. But right now there's only 19 at this Ottawa car dealership. Ted Smith has been selling cars as fast as they come in. Even the car set aside as a demo for a manager is a hot commodity. I've had four dealers call me for this, pick, uh, for this traverse today. So that's the, the, the kind of demand. 
Buyers who can't find a car on the lot can order one, but depending on where it's coming from, it can take two to four months. We're in a kind of once in a generation crisis in inventory. Flavio Volpe is with the Automobile Parts Manufacturers Association. He says the issue is a worldwide supply shortage of microchips. They operate everything from the brake system to the air conditioning to the windshield wipers. He says cars are being half built, then set aside to wait for the elusive part. To deal with the shortage, federal officials met with industry last week to talk about how Canada can start making its own. I think COVID taught us that there are just some goods that you have to have a domestic reserve of and um, not just for cars, but for everything else that we're doing, microchips has become one of them. The slowdown in new car production has driven up prices for used cars. This entire inventory situation boils down to economics 101, supply and demand. There isn't enough supply, there is still demand both for new and used vehicles and automakers have stopped, essentially stopped, offering incentives on new vehicles because they know they don't have any on the lot. They know demand is strong. So why would an automaker give you, the customer, a discount if they know you're in a position to pay full price? Car dealerships expect the inventory issue will be the biggest problem for several more months. There is a lot of pent up demand in the market, new demand created by the pandemic. And now we just have to find uh, supply to, to, uh, to sell those vehicles and to, um, to, to provide those customers. Last week, the CEO of Ford warned the supply problem could continue through early next year. Back at the dealership, Smith hopes that won't be the case. Without selling the car, nothing else works. Crystalie Ramlikan, CBC News, Ottawa. You know those days, Kali, not sure what's going on. It's sunny and warm and then it's cloudy and cool and back and forth and back and forth. Yeah, and you know, we ended July just with this kind of cool spell, right? And okay, now we're into August. We are going to see things changing a little bit. But through the holiday weekend, we've still been into that kind of northwesterly flow and that has kept things uh, a little bit on the cooler side, even when we get the sunshine coming out. We're going to see that, like I say, hey, mixing it up. We're going to get rid of this trough that's been plaguing us in the east. Impact on the temperatures, I say mild, but really it's just a matter of kind of pushing us back to seasonal daytime highs. And how about that risk of showers? Okay, it comes into the GTA at the end of the week. There's a few areas, though, where we could see a few spotty showers tomorrow afternoon, and I will illustrate that in a minute for eastern Ontario and southwestern Ontario as well. I want to kind of show you how things in the extreme west have been calming down in terms of the temperatures. You see all the bright orange here in the heat, Saskatoon at 34, 31 for Winnipeg. So some of that heat is coming towards us, but it is also moderating a little bit. So it won't be as extreme as that. But finally, it's pushing from west and moving east as it's supposed to do here with our weather patterns. So our highs today, not terribly impressive. When you consider an average high for Ottawa is 26, Toronto 27, similar for Windsor. And these were the daytime highs. And then the current temperatures, I'll say one thing for it, it is very comfortable. Even our dew points are relatively comfortable. So even with the Humidex, you only add a tiny bit into this. We'll start to see the humidity building though uh, through the next week. So what's happening tonight? Not a lot. So that's a good thing. A nice way, a nice evening, right? For a holiday to kind of cap things off. And then as we look ahead as to what will be happening, this is the little bit of lift that comes into the forecast tomorrow. So isolated shower chance in southwestern Ontario into the afternoon and early evening and as well here through the Ottawa Valley stretching over towards Cornwall you have the risk of seeing a few pop-up showers or thunderstorms mostly though it's going to be dry another area I'll just point out towards the Niagara region you could see a little bit of something in there but I think mostly again the experience is going to be of seeing sunshine and experiencing sunshine for you so just trying to get things going here with our clicker to make sure let me try the other one and see if I can finish up your forecast for you. Okay, there we go. As we pull into later in the day on Tuesday, things looking good. But a look at your temperatures tonight. That's what it's like for the southwestern Ontario region. This is that little warm up taking you back to where you should be for this time of year and just having a look at what's going on here through Toronto. Also, the temperatures coming up. We'll finish off with a look at the Ottawa Valley and the five day forecast coming up, Dwight. We are across the province tonight, so hello to the folks in Ottawa, Windsor, mm -hmm. etc. Thank you, Colette. You're welcome.
Sussex is no longer just a picnic, it's a luxurious one. One local business has replaced a plastic tablecloth and throwaway cutlery for silverware, fine linens, and locally sourced food and drinks. Jennifer LaGrassa has more on the rising trend. Remember when this and some food were all you needed to have a picnic? Well, one local business is changing that. Your traditional picnic has been upgraded. Welcome to your proper picnic. 21-year-old Siana Yusaletti is elevating Windsor-Essex picnic game. Her business, Proper Picnics, launched in March. It offers a variety of elaborate picnic setups, including fancy place settings, charcuterie boards, and florals. You just have to pick the spot and pay the cost. I just found a need for something exciting to do in Windsor, and I thought that we needed something, especially during COVID. Most people are just shocked, and the reactions that we get are really great and it's also kind of funny I think. Um, definitely the surprise picnics are my favorite because they're just not expecting it at all. But the LaSalle entrepreneur isn't alone. Luxury picnics have become a nationwide trend. It's one of many outdoor events that seem to have grown in popularity during the pandemic. And even though people can choose anywhere in the region for their fancy picnic, half of Yusaletti's clients want it in their own backyard. With everything now with social distancing and COVID, it was a wonderful opportunity to have a little bit of paradise in our own backyard and the convenience of it. Um, so we just decided why not? Why go someplace else when we've got the backyard to do it? But it can get quite pricey for a backyard soiree. Events range from $200 to more than $1,000. I wish it was just as easy as throwing a blanket down, but it really isn't. Um, so we've been really fortunate that people are understanding and willing, more than willing, to pay the price for a luxury experience. She's already set up 100 picnics across the region and is nearly fully booked until the end of summer. Jennifer LaGrassa, CBC News, Windsor. Delano Banton became the first Canadian to be drafted by the Toronto Raptors last week. He grew up in Rexdale and represents his roots with his jersey number. I'm from the, the north side of Rexdale, Kipling, and the 45 comes from the 45 Kipling bus, and that runs, I'm from Kipling and Mount Olive, so it runs through Mount Olive, like, right, that's the stop, and it's the 45 Kipling, so when I was trying to think of a number that means something to me, just, you know, I was, I was kind of getting tired of just wearing numbers, you know, I feel like you could always make meaning of something. So I felt like, you know, once that clicked to me, it stuck. You know, everyone who knows me knows I'm a guy who takes where I'm from with me with pride, you know? So I feel like that was it. And just, you know, gyms right across the street, we had the Rexdale Community Hub. That was literally across the street from me. Like, everyone from my neighborhood goes there, like, every single day. That's where I grew up. Like, after school, that's where you go. That's where everyone goes. You. They get you in the gym, they make sure you do your schoolwork and stuff like that. So, you know, just, just being in those neighborhoods, just take advantage of those community centers. Oh, you tell them, kid. The 21-year-old point guard was selected in the second round of the NBA draft from the University of Nebraska. We spoke with Banton's former coach, who says it's clear, it's clear he was special. When I first met Delano, he was 13 years old. 13 years old, that's correct. So he was 13 years old. Uh, he was short, though. He was a shorter kid at the time. He wasn't the 6'9 that he is now. Um, but uh, yeah, he, he came to, our, he actually didn't come to the trial. He came to, to our practices afterwards. And when we saw him start playing, we knew we had to put him on the team. So uh, he started playing with us from then. And uh, uh, always a very good kid. Always very, um, always very eager to play basketball, get in the gym. Never could take him out of the gym. Always the last one to leave. And uh, if there was an opportunity to play, so if there was a gym or anything available, he would always want to be there no matter what. Yeah, very good kid though. Banton spent a long weekend celebrating with friends and family. I think I saw him with Drake even, but he's focused on continuing to grind for his new team, he says. He hopes to give back to his community up in Rexdale, too. And it could be an end of an era in Toronto. NBA's free agency period began just 25 minutes ago, but multiple reports say Raptor Kyle Lowry is taking his talents to Miami. Suspected Lowry will sign a three-year deal with the Heat. He has been with Toronto since 2012. I know Colette won't like hearing that news. <laughs> I can't take that emotional roller coaster yes. ride. So the the maybes he might be going, might be going. I just we'll talk. <laughs> Let's wait, see what happens. Then then we'll talk here. Love him so much. Uh, you know, it's been a pretty nice end to the holiday weekend, right? We've got some uh, dry conditions. It's only uh, going on 6.30. You still have uh, lots of evening to enjoy what's left of this holiday Monday. Whoops, let's show you what's going on. I want to give you the Ottawa forecast here overnight tonight so you can get... Ah, 
a sense of how, where those temperatures are going. I mean, it's not single digits, but 10 degrees, Kingston, getting pretty close there. But tomorrow, warming up, back closer to seasonal, slight chance for some isolated showers or thunderstorms into the late afternoon, early evening. It's this folks i think that's uh, more what people or some people anyway dwight have been looking for we like that it's all well, at least we're now seasonal that is our show for tonight Where thank we you for joining be. us